MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Marinci. Thanks to uh, Frank Trigg for joining us on the program. Good for him, man. Uh, stuntman working on the set of Hawaii Five-0. Uh, Frank is uh, living large. Now, for the record, well, if you were watching that uh, the interview with Frank and you thought that, you know, why do I, do I hear a bird chirping? And, you know, this show's on in the evening and it replays in the middle of the night. Uh, uh, so you're probably wondering, where, where's that bird sound coming from? And it would be driving me crazy. Uh, but basically, there's like a bird stuck in a vent uh, in our studio above. And I'm not really concerned about the bird sound. I just, you know, I'm always like afraid the bird's dying or something like that. Because this, this bird's been chirping for like a week. So I'm concerned that he's actually stuck in there. There's not much we can do. Uh, but we think he's actually probably actually on the roof just, uh, just hanging out. Either way, you know, just for all of you that, you know, smoked a bowl... And, uh, you know, you're like, man, where was that bird sound? And you're looking around, you're like, what the hell? It would be driving me crazy. There's an ad on TV in which the cell phone, like, vibrates. I freaking hate that ad with a passion. I want to boycott the company, whoever it is, just because of it. I always think my cell phone's ringing, and it really pisses me off. Let's bring in uh, Lou from Gamblu.com. Lou doesn't piss me off. I always look forward to talking to Lou. What's up, Lou? Not too much, Gabriel. I'm glad I don't upset you because uh, I like coming on here and sharing fight inside every week with you. All right, so let's blast through them, uh, Lou. The main card, so we're in Brazil, Fight Night 95. The main card, you know, I guess you can call it mismatches, but, you know, they're heavily audited fights. Let's start off with Cyborg, minus 1,300 against Lena Landsberg, making her UFC debut. Nobody really knows too much about Landsberg. She's fought, uh, she's a Muay Thai competitor. She's been on the Muay Thai circuit uh, for years. Six and one is a mixed martial artist. But she's fought a bunch of fighters that are like five and seven and stuff like that. Um, you know, the total is one and a half, minus 350 to the under, Lou. This is pretty much the biggest one and a half odds I've ever seen to the under at minus 350. At this point, why don't they just make it half uh, half around? Well, I I don't know how to respond to that. I mean, it, it, that's about the only uh, angle to the fight that you can take is if you can think that Landsberg's going to go in there and if she can, you know do the Usain Bolt and run around the octagon. There's a better for... chance, Lou, that you and I grow hair than Cyborg not beating this girl in seven and a half minutes. <laughs> I, I totally agree. And for that and for that reason, this is a fight we've put no time in. I mean, as I, as I discussed with you last night, you know, I've seen fights that are set up fights. I've rarely seen a card that's a set up card. And that's how I look at this card. There's I'm tracking four fights that could be competitive, of which I'm trying to find a live dog or two. Uh, just for the record, six of Cyborg's last seven fights have ended in the first round. Uh, all right, uh, Conan went like four rounds with her. Other than that, everyone gets destroyed instantly. And Landsberg might be a decent fighter, but, like, yeah, she's just getting sacrificed uh, here. The only thing that might save Landsberg is the fact that Cyborg doesn't make weight, Lou. We hear she's weighed like 165 pounds earlier in the week. Yeah, and I, I just looked on Twitter, and it looks like she's, you know, 12 or 15 away with 48 hours. Uh, you know, I I think she goes through that every time. I, I don't know why they just don't make a wait for her and let other girl bring more, uh, you know, competent yeah. lady fighters in. But Cyborg is, a, is she's just a white tornado. She's going to uh, dominate me uh, or whoever they put in with her. Yeah, 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 she's a badass. All right, so uh, you talk about setups, uh, Burrell. Former champion, a guy that won like 28 fights in a row, uh, was humbled by Dillashaw, uh, coming off the loss to Jeremy Stevens, has lost three of his last four fights. It's amazing uh, the fall from uh, grace of like guys like Pettis, Lil Pettis coming off a win, but like Burrell, who's really on top of the world, and uh, now you know he's, he's a minus 450 favorite in a fight that he has to win and should win. Yeah, again, another setup here. Nover has has done had an erratic career over much, much inferior competition. And uh, even though Barrow's skills seem to be waning, he looked pretty good early against Stevens. Uh, I think the number's about right, and I, I can't go near Nover. Uh, Nelson and Bigfoot, very similar. You know, they were doing great retrospective uh, series here on the Fight Network, and uh, I believe it was Ramdeen put together a series about how 
uh, Barnett and Arlovsky had never fought each other before. And you would sort of just assume, like, wow, that, that's kind of crazy. And same thing with Nelson and Bigfoot. You just sort of, I would have assumed, and you know, I looked it up like three times over and over. It was the middle of the night. But I'm like, man, they have to have fought each other at some point. But uh, no, Nelson's minus 415. This is a train wreck of a fight, man. Bigfoot's 1-5-1 and one in his last seven fights. Roy Nelson's 2-6 and six in his last eight fights. I think Roy Nelson beats him, but there's no way in hell, man, I'm laying minus 400 on Roy Nelson. Yeah, you know, five years ago, this fight would have been close to a pick, and Antonio would have been fully juiced, uh, and therefore his, his uh, fragile chin minimized, and Roy uh, would, would be a heck of a fighter. Uh, he's still a great fighter with a granite chin, uh, but moving forward into Saturday's fight, uh, the the only way I, I see this thing going is uh, is over the one and a half uh, is a is a plus 170. To me, maybe I look for the fight to start round two and get close to even money, or maybe a little bit of a pick. But Silva knows. Uh, of his fragile chin. He's got to do something about it. And to me, I think he gets back on the juice because he knows he's he's soon to be out. And what's it going to hurt him? He, he wants to win in front of his people. Uh, if Silva could be a flyer here, or you just try and take some gimmicky over, or the fight starts round two. You know what? I was thinking the same thing as far as the over, Lou. Well, you know, uh, Silva's been KO'd uh, in the first round of five of his last seven fights, but uh, I think Roy's more patient, slower. Uh, I, I agree with you. All right, we've only got two minutes, unfortunately, here, Lou. Let's get to our real fight, Trinaldo and Felder. I look at this fight, fun fight. Trinaldo's like a 35-cent favorite here. You know, it's going to be tough, man. Trinaldo's 38 years old, but he seems to get better with age. I like this guy. Guy's got a ton of heart. He, you know, extremely popular in Brazil. You know, he was on a TV show, so, he, you, know, many, you know, tens of millions of people love this guy. And, like, he just fights with a ton of heart. You know, Felder's good. You know, two-fight losing streak. Now he's put together two in a row uh, here, coming off of wins against Crookshank and Berkman. But I feel like Felder has to knock him out to beat him in Brazil. Uh, what do you make of this one? Uh, this is one of the fights that looks competitive to me. Clearly, Tr Trinaldo has been the hotter fighter. And, uh, you know, the, the recency syndrome has everybody leaning Trinaldo. How's he only break minus 130? Uh, to me, it, this is as fishy a fight as it gets. I know that Felder is limited, but he, he is aggressive. He's six years younger. And other than that, they're about the same size. I give Felder the striking advantage. I give Trinaldo more ways to win. This is a this is a dog that we may want to try and bark with in Paul Felder. All right, Lou, we've only got 15 seconds here. I want to get your quick take, but you got to be real fast here. Dilatory, MMA lab guy. I know you know him well. I've been following him uh, since he fought uh, he fought Bocek. Uh, quick take. Uh, you know, you're you're an Arizona guy, but you're not a homer. Dilatory or uh, Pepe? Yeah, I, I, Pepe's in on a little bit of short notice. De La Torre hasn't fought in about a year or so, but not by his liking. When when that bell rings for round one, De La Torre going to weigh 160. He's going to be a much bigger man. Uh, we've already released Mike De La Torre at plus 130. Uh, we love we love his chances here. He's going to have to weather a furious first round from Pepe, but we like De La Torre. All right, uh, check out Lou over at Gamblue.com. Excellent insight as always, Lou. Thank you so much, Gabriel. Good luck this week. All right, we got to be quick and get out of here, but uh, trust me, this video is worth hanging around for.